Welcome everyone to the Codesultant channel. Today, our topic is part 3 of section 250.24, specifically subsection 250.24d. In this discussion, we will explore the code rules regarding the grounded conductor brought to service equipment. Additionally, we will delve into the sizing requirements for service grounded conductors in a single raceway, as well as the parallel installation of service grounded conductors in two or more raceways. According to section 250.24d, if an AC system operating at 1000 volts or less is grounded at any location, the grounded conductors must be routed alongside the ungrounded conductors to each service disconnecting means. Furthermore, they should be connected to the grounded conductor's terminal or bus of each disconnecting means. To ensure proper bonding, a main bonding jumper should connect the grounded conductors to the enclosure of each service disconnecting means. The installation of the grounded conductors must adhere to the guidelines outlined in sections 250.24 D1 through 250.24 D4. In the illustration, if the utility service that supplies the premises wiring is a grounded system, it is necessary to run the grounded conductor alongside the ungrounded conductors to the service equipment. This conductor must be connected to the grounded conductor's terminal or bus of each disconnecting means. Note that the main bonding jumper is a strap type that connects to the enclosure of the service disconnect means. Let's consider a scenario where the service supply grounded system operates at 120 volts, 240 volts, single phase, with a three-wire configuration. In this setup, the line-to-line -line voltage is 240 volts, and the line-to-ground neutral voltage is 120 volts. However, there is a specific disconnect that does not require a 120 volt connection. The question arises as to whether it is permissible to omit the grounded service conductor for that particular disconnect. The main requirement of this section is to ensure the installation and bonding of the grounded service conductor to each service disconnecting means enclosure. This applies even if the grounded neutral is not necessary for the premises wiring. The rationale behind this requirement is that, on the line side of the service disconnecting means, the grounded conductor plays a crucial role in establishing the ground fault current path between the service equipment and the utility source. Nevertheless, there is an exception to this section that allows for the joining of the grounded conductors to the assembly. This exception applies when two or more service disconnecting means are located in a single body approved as service equipment. In such cases, the main bonding jumper, included in the assembly, connects the grounded conductors to the enclosure. Furthermore, this exception aligns with exception number 1 of 250.24 C and acknowledges that multi-section switchboards or switchgear used as service equipment are securely bolted together. Additionally, these sections are equipped with an equipment grounding bus that interconnects them. The last sentence of 250.24 D says, the grounded conductors shall be installed in accordance with 250.24 D1 through D4. Section 250.24 D1 pertains to the sizing requirements for a single raceway or cable, specifically addressing the grounded conductor. According to this section, the grounded conductor must be no smaller than the values specified in Table 250.102 C1. The left side of Table 250.102 C1 corresponds to the size of the largest installed ungrounded conductor while the right side provides the required size for the grounded conductor, main bonding jumper, system bonding jumper, or supply side bonding jumper. For instance, let's consider a scenario where there are two 400,000 circular mills, 400 KC mill, THHN, THWN2 copper conductors and a single neutral in a 120 volts, 240V single phase grounded system within a single raceway. According to 250.24, D1, the grounded conductor should not be smaller than the size specified in Table 250.102, C1. Since our conductors are 400 KC mil copper, we locate the row that states, over 350 through 600 inches on the left side of the table under the copper column. As our example falls within that range, we move horizontally to the size of grounded conductor or bonding jumper, column and find that the recommended size for our 400 KC mil conductors is 1 aught AWG. Consequently, our single raceway with two 400 KC mil THHN, THWN2 copper conductors for the ungrounded, 
Hot. Conductors would require a minimum 1 aught AWG copper grounded conductor. Let's have another example. Assuming we have two sets of 400 kc mill conductors in a single raceway, we calculate the equivalent area by considering one ungrounded conductor from each set, resulting in 400 kc mill times 2 equals 800 kc mill. Referring to Table 250.102, C1, again, we follow the same steps as before and find that the minimum size for the grounded conductor would be 2 aught AWG copper. In the scenario where the ungrounded conductors exceed 1100 kc mil copper or 1750 kc mil aluminum, let's consider a 1000 amp circuit that will be installed in a cable tray. According to Table 310.18 for ampacity, there is no single conductor available for that ampacity. Therefore, paralleling of conductors will be necessary, taking into account factors such as correction factors and adjustment factors. To accommodate the 1000 amps, we would require three sets of 500 kc mil, 500,000 circular mils, conductors, resulting in a total combined circular mil of 1,500,000, 1,500 kc mil. Following note 1, we need to consider 12.5% of the 1,500,000 circular mils, which equals 187,500 circular mils. Referring to chapter 9, table 8, we find that the minimum size for the grounded conductor would be 4 aught AWG copper, as the 3 aught AWG below it only accommodates 167,800 circular mils. Hence, for this situation, the minimum size required for the grounded conductor would be 4 aught AWG. What if these conductors are installed per set in different raceways? According to section 250.24, D2, when the ungrounded service entrance conductors are paralleled in two or more raceways or cables, the grounded conductor must also be installed in parallel. The size of the grounded conductor in each raceway or cable should be determined based on the total circular mill area of the parallel ungrounded conductors in that raceway or cable, as specified in 250.24. D1. With the requirement that it should not be smaller than 1 aught AWG. Note that the neutral grounded conductors has to be sized to handle the maximum unbalanced load per 220.61a. Since we are not given the value of the unbalanced current, we will only determine the minimum size of grounded neutral conductor. Going back to example 3, our installation has 3 sets of 500,000 circular mils, 500 kc mil, copper conductors, with THHN, THWN2 insulation in a metal conduit. Each conduit consists of three ungrounded conductors, as this is a three-phase system, and one grounded neutral conductors in each raceway. We need to size the grounded conductor. Since they're all 500 kc mil, we size the grounded neutral per table 250.102, C1, based on the 500 kc mil in the single raceway, which would be a one aught copper. You would repeat this for each raceway resulting in all of the raceways having a one aught copper grounded neutral conductor. How did the statement in this section 250.24, D2, say, not smaller than one aught AWG, in? That statement is referring to the parallel rules in 310.10, G, that state, and do not consider any of the exceptions as they are not directly applicable to our installation. Section 310.10, G1, General. Aluminum, copper clad aluminum, or copper conductors for each phase, polarity, neutral, or grounded circuit shall be permitted to be connected in parallel, electrically joined at both ends, only in sizes 1 aught AWG and larger where installed in accordance with 310.10, G2, through, G6. Why is this important? Well, if you had done the calculation and the grounded conductor ended up being smaller than 1 aught, let's say a 2 AWG if the conductors were actually 350 kc mil in each raceway, then someone may contemplate that it is okay to use a 2 AWG in each raceway, after all, that is what the table 250.102, C1, appears to express. However, since the rules in 250.24, D2, 
demands the installer to parallel the grounded conductor when the ungrounded conductors are also paralleled in two or more raceways, is as required to follow the parallel rules in 310.10G and bump the 2AWG up to a minimum 1 aught AWG due to the paralleling rules. Thank you all for watching.